and welcome to another episode of Cooking with the Pan Ladies, brought to you by oh, U.S. Silhouette. Completely customizable. You choose the wood, so I send you samples of wood. You get to put whatever states you want on it, and you get to pick what's painted on the state. Okay, so today we are making guacamole. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with half a sweet onion. So sweet Vidalia, that's um, the kind, that the sweet Vidalia is my go-to onion. I know um, a lot of people like the red. You can put really whatever your favorite onion in onion is inside of it. I don't like huge chunks of like the crunchy stuff. So I don't cut my onions too um, thick. I do them pretty thin. And um, I think that's, I like that amount. So, you know, there's like so many ways that chefs say you can cut these onions. And I know uh, Madeline has said, oh yeah, that's how you cut, you cut like, totally different but this is the way it works for me so this is how I do. I like to do um, two regular size jalapenos or um, a large one totally up to you. This feeds about eight people if you're just having chips and guacamole. Six or eight people if you're just having chips and guacamole. I when I cut my jalapenos we like um, it spicy so I leave everything. I leave the veins, I leave the seeds, everything so I just cut them um, in little strips like this all the way down next one and then I'm just gonna go ahead and chop them because you get the little bitty pieces of um, jalapeno instead of big pieces because sometimes the jalapenos can be really hot and then it of course you know if you like really hot then it's probably not uncomfortable but if you don't like really hot and you get a big chunk of jalapeno in there oh my goodness it makes it almost uncomfortable to eat the guacamole my uh, cutting board needs to be redone it needs to be resanded and refinished i use it like three times a day so okay and now i get um probably one and a half of the hot house tomatoes I like the flavor of hot house tomatoes, but really you can use whatever um, tomatoes are your favorite. When we lived up north, we used to grow tomatoes, and my favorite thing to do was to slice them up and then have homemade white bread and um, put just Miracle Whip, the bread, uh, slices of tomatoes, and a little bit of salt. And that was like an amazing little summer treat for me. One make a mess like I always do because that's how I roll. All right. My guacamole I've been making for a while and recently we were turned on to flavored guacamoles which I don't know maybe you all have done that before have that before but I hadn't and I tried it because I've always like oh that's so gross you put certain stuff in your guacamole that's you shouldn't do that seen it on TV shows and things like that and no thank you okay so now I'm gonna go and I'm gonna probably get a, hmm, like a handful of cilantro so I get my cilantro and I just chop that baby up to small pieces sometimes cilantro can be like very mild and sometimes it can be really strong so if you happen to get a batch that's really strong you'll be able to smell like extremely smell it when you're starting to cut it so I would probably not put as much in there because the really strong cilantro is gonna give your avocado pretty much a cilantro's taste so I would just 
you'll be able to gauge um, on cilantro. Now I have all of those ingredients into my bowl. Now I'm going to go with my avocado. Um, funny story, my sister, a few years back, she, um, she was a, oh, what's she trained to do? Like, I don't know, health, dietitian, I don't know, whatever. But um, we were at a family gathering and I was making some guacamole and um, she saw what I was doing. She's like, oh my gosh, I never knew that you, that's how you take out a pit. Or, and then I said, really? And then she said, yeah. And then she said, I never knew that's how you get chunks of avocado. <laughs> I thought everybody knew that, but apparently not. So what I'm doing is I'm just, uh, I get the pit out and then I'm just cross cutting it. So I cut it um, one way and then I cut it the other way. And then I'm just, you know what? I want to add this actually to another bowl because I want to mash it a little bit before. I like to have chunks of my avocado, but not like a ton of them. So we need to mash this before. So I'm going to use four avocados for this uh, recipe because I'm going to break it up into um, three different flavors. Oh, look at that. That avocado just split ah. right in half. So that's going to be fun getting that piece out. Okay. Um, when choosing avocados, you don't want to get one that's too firm and you don't want that's too soft. So when you squeeze an avocado, um, cause they can be either dark color or they can be light green and, um, they might both be, um, ready inside. So what you want to do is you just want to squeeze it just a little bit. If it gives a little bit, I think that's the perfect. If you can't find any, um, that I give a little bit that are pretty hard, go ahead and put them in a paper bag all together overnight and um, in the morning they'll be perfect. Garlic salt, just add um, a little bit at first. And then, um, cause if it's not as salty as you want, you can always add more later. Then I'm gonna add some pepper to that. And then I'm going to add some garlic powder because I don't, I don't like the taste of fresh garlic in um, guacamole. So there's some garlic powder. And then I'm going to get a lime and put a little bit of lime juice. Lime juice is really cool because lime juice helps to preserve um, or avocados guacamole like halfway through everybody hanging out like at a barbecue or whatever and it starts to go brown well if you put um lime juice in it that helps preserve it to make it last longer limes give it a good taste and help to preserve the color of the avocado all right so i'm just mashing this with my spoon because i don't want it i don't want it completely smooth i want it chunky not like majorly chunky, but you'll see what I mean once I'm done. Put that to my bowl of peppers and onions and tomatoes. So we're gonna go ahead and stir this all together. Just like that. And pretty much at this point, your guacamole is done. Oh, it's so delicious. So, now for the fun part. First thing, I'm gonna take my bowl again that I just mashed my, my uh, avocados in, and I'm gonna take a couple scoops of this into here. Now, one thing, and I didn't think I would like it, um, we have blue cheeseburgers, we have, um, my husband eats, uh, uh, it's a buffalo chicken, blue cheese, bacon, and ranch wrap. He has that for lunch pretty much every day. And so we really like blue cheese. Um, so this little batch, I'm going to add some bacon and you can use either the bagged bacon or we had some bacon left over from breakfast. So I just chopped it up, add some bacon and then add some blue cheese and my favorite blue cheese is this um, smokehouse blue you can find it at aj's 
You're going to take some of that blue cheese and you're just going to crumble it. Do pretty good size crumbles. I know blue cheese is hard to crumble because it's so um, moist. I'm going to use that word again, moist. But um, so I just have a little bit of guacamole, so I don't want to have a lot of blue cheese, but just enough. So I think that's good. Guacamole, bacon, and blue cheese. So good. So you just mix that up carefully so you're not mashing up your um, blue cheese. So you get chunks of bacon and chunks of blue cheese with all the other chunks. So there's that one. There's that. And then just get the guac, or just get the pomegranate. If you want to see the pomegranate, go ahead and do that. I didn't want to because I have no clue how to. So I just got some of these already juicy little pomegranate things and we can eat them on salads later or whatever. But um, so then you just put some of the pomegranate inside the guacamole and you just carefully stir it up because you don't want to pop them. You want them to stay whole inside there, so just fold them in carefully. You guys, this recipe is so easy. These recipes are so easy, and I promise you, if you bring this to whatever cookout or whatever family gathering you're doing, any kind of uh, guacamole with this special stuff, they're going to think, oh my gosh, I need your recipe. Can you please give me your recipe? You're going to be a hit. So there's that one. And then we just have our, our normal um, guacamole mix. I'm gonna give these a taste test. Let's see. Okay, so we're going after the original first. Mm-hmm. I do make a mess when I eat. And when I cook, that's so good. The chips are really salty. And so you don't wanna put too much salt into your guacamole because then it would be like ridiculous. So salt your guacamole just enough to where it's like, you can barely tell the salt in it. All right, so now I'm going for the blue cheese and bacon. Let's see if I can find, oh, there's a piece of blue cheese. So see the tomato and the bacon, the blue cheese. That's so good. You can taste the bacon with the guacamole, which is so good. And then you just get the littlest hint of blue cheese. Like it's just barely there. And that smokehouse blue cheese is like perfect to go with bacon. Okay, now this is one that we just barely tried. Like I said, I thought, oh, it's just a gimmick pomegranate in your guacamole so there's some pomegranates in there mm. so so good so I think with the pomegranate you are chewing on the chip and all of a sudden you bite into the pomegranate and then it just releases that sweet juice along with the spicy jalapeno and the onion but I feel like with that one, I'm going to add a little more of the garlic salt just because of um, the sweetness of the pomegranate. Our guacamole recipe, our original, our blue cheese and bacon and our pomegranate. I really hope you guys try this and I really hope you guys tell me what you think because um, I would love to know if you enjoyed this recipe. Thank you guys. See you next time. Try this? Yep. Seriously. Blue cheese, bacon, and guacamole were meant to be together. <laughs>